How are you? Very well, thank you. Good. Congratulations. I know you're on, you made the uh, bestseller list today. That's a, have you received a congratulatory, congratulatory call from the White House? I have not. You're I'm right waiting now. for one. Mm -hmm. uh, operators are standing by. <laughs> we'll see if it happens. I'm not going to hold my breath. Would you agree with the president's assessment that he has been treated less fairly than anyone in history? Yes, I would say that. It's very, it's very sad what he's going through right now, being president of the United States. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, you, well, there's a lot of, I know there's a lot of real good stuff in the book, but, but he seems to have, I feel like deep down maybe he kind of likes you, even though he hates you, because sometimes he, sometimes, of course he mostly hates you, but <laughs> sometimes he, complim he be, seem, begrudgingly compliments you. He does do that, yes, and I write about this in the book. There's an episode in February of uh, 2017. We have a, a press conference, and during this press conference, he calls me very fake news. And then after, yeah, and then after the press conference is over, I get a phone call, and it's from one of his top aides, Hope Hicks. And she goes, Jim, I just want you to know the president said you were very professional today, and he said, Jim gets it. And I thought to myself, wait a minute, I was just very fake news uh, five minutes ago, and now I'm very professional. Uh, it just goes to show you this is sort of a reality TV shtick that he took from The Apprentice and turned it into the presidency. Do you think and, so? Do yeah. you think that's true? Or I could, do. Could it possibly be that he thinks that by complimenting you, you will go easier on him? I think that's part of it. As I write in the book, he, he loves the coverage, but he hates the scrutiny. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we find out when we call him out on some of these falsehoods, uh, some people call them lies, uh, you know, that's when it gets under his skin, and, and, his, and his folks get very upset about it. And yet he keeps doing it, though, so it doesn't seem <laughs> to bother him that much. No, that's right, and I write about this in the book. You know, the president of the United States has uttered approximately 10,000 false or misleading statements since coming into office, according to the Washington Post, and that's turned us into fact-checkers in real time. And as I tell folks all the time, and I write in the book, we are here not just to report the news now, we're here to defend the truth. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess so. It's going to mean something. Yeah. <laughs> Not by choice, but that yeah. is the way it kind of has turned out to be. Right. One of the other items in the book, you said that someone, uh, I assume a senior administration official, told you that the president is insane. Yes, that did happen. Uh, you know, from time to time, I'll talk to officials, and they want to talk about this anonymously, obviously. They want right. to give their name. And I was just sitting down to have drinks with this person one day, and he sat down right across from me and goes, the president's insane. And I said, wait a minute, what are you talking about here? And he went on to say how frustrated he was that the president seemed ignorant of the Constitution and things like that. And it just goes to show you there are people, you know, don't take it from me, take it from people who work for him inside the White House. They are exhausted at times by his behavior. And yet a lot of them keep working there and they don't they, say anything publicly. That's right. And, you know, what I tell folks is, and I think one of the reasons why we've seen uh, a problem with the White House press secretary, the one we have now or the one before, is a lot of these folks have lost sight of the fact they work for the American people. They don't work for Donald Trump. They don't work for the Trump organization. They're supposed to work for us. Oh, uh, yeah, theoretically. Sure. Theoretically, yeah. I don't think that's how Donald sees well, it. I don't know about that. But... Will you miss Sarah Huckabee Sanders when she's gone? I will miss her terribly. Yeah, will, will you be invited to the party, do you think? I don't think so, uh, no. Yeah. I, you know. What is your relationship like with her personally? I know you've had, even like off camera, you've had some problems. Yeah, you know, it was funny. After they took away my press pass and we got it back in court. Uh, I, ha yeah. I have it right here. I brought it with me. <laughs> They're not getting it this time, Jimmy. They're not getting it this time. Um, you know, uh, after I got it back, there was a Christmas party with the press and some of the folks at the White House, and she and this uh, guy, Bill Shine, who worked for the president for a while, came up to me, and they wanted to sing the 12 Days of Christmas. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, wait a minute, we just went through this whole press pass court case and everything, and they, we got to about five golden rings, and I was like, that's it, I'm out of here. What? Yeah. Just the three of you, they wanted to sing it? And then the that's rest the of the That's the press... craziest thing I've ever heard, yeah. by the way. They, it, it was, oh. it was, yes. And I didn't know if it was Deck the Halls or Deck the Correspondent, you know. It was, wow, that's I, yeah. really very disturbing. It's like almost like a horror movie. It is, it was, actually, <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, wow. How, and what about Sean Spicer? He, you not, he's not gonna like this book at he's all. He's not, well, yeah. you know, listen, I I mean, I, I would love to have a professional relationship with all of them, civil and polite at all times, but there have been times, and I write about this in the book, where it gets a little heat, it gets a lot of hand. I was 
with my uh, son one morning, and I get this phone call at 7 in the morning, and it says, Sean Spicer. I said, oh, this can't be good. Uh -huh. And he proceeded to call me something that I, I really can't say in front of a family audience here. Uh, it, there was an F word in there and, uh -huh. and so on. And my son looks at me and goes, Dad, who is that? And I said, son, that was the White House. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, How that kind of sums it up. He's 10. He's 10. So, it was what, coming through the phone? It was so is, loud? It was so loud it was coming through the phone. That is really, really crazy. Yeah. Who do you think the next press secretary will be? My sources are telling me that Mary Hart may be named. Uh, <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Uh, my sense of it, it might be Donald Trump. You know, he's, <laughs> he's his own communications director. Yeah. Uh, he might be his own press secretary. You know, there's a spokesman for the first lady, Stephanie Grisham. She may get it. I've talked to people who say that. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But my sense of it is we're going to have a situation now where we, we're not going to see this White House briefing very much anymore. It's been om almost 100 days or over 100 days since the last White House briefing. You know, this used to be when the press secretary would go in, answer all of our questions. We don't do that anymore. Now Sarah Sanders, she goes out to the Fox News live position on the North Lawn of the White House, takes questions from them, and then if she has time, she'll stop and talk to us for a few minutes in the driveway. It's not what the taxpayers are expecting from the press secretary. We pay their salaries. We should be getting our money's worth. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. You be even-handed. Yeah. Not that I'm playing to the audience right here. I just wanted to show <laughs> one thing here, because I think the, the photograph on the cover of this book, <laughs> there's you right here, kind of yeah. just says the whole thing. And you yeah. asking a question of the president going, all right, Jim, damn it. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's funny, that picture I believe was taken right after I got my press pass back. And you know, th they were saying, we're never gonna talk to Jim Acosta again, we're never gonna take questions from him again. The next day, after I got my press pass back, he took a question, he took a follow-up question. Well, sometimes the lies work out all right. <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes it does. Well, but we're there to hold their feet to the fire, and it doesn't matter what they call us, what they try to do to us. We're here to work on behalf of the American people and get answers to these questions. Jim Acosta, everyone. The Enemy of the People is available now. Thanks, Jim. We'll be Thank right back so with Kamesh Patel. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel, and I am not allowed to eat this cookie until you click the subscribe button. So please click now. I'm hungry.